Hi everyone, welcome to new video from Not Real Engineering. And in this video, we are going to see how to use subroutine deload with Abacus. There are two similar subroutines. One is deload and another is vload. This deload subroutine we are going to see in this video. And this is for Abacus standard. And vload is also very similar subroutine. If you see this video and understand how deload works, you will able to use vload as well without any difficulty. Only difference is this is for Abacus explicit and both subroutines are used to define a variation of distributed load magnitude as a function of many things such as position, time, element number, load integration point number, etc. Most of the time people use it to define change in load magnitude with respect to position or time. We are going to solve this example. This is just a very crude simplification of this bridge over here this image shows a suspended bridge i'm simplifying this model a lot and here i'm representing this road on the bridge with shell elements the dimensions of this road is given over here so width of road is 200 that means this is 200 length is 2000 millimeter thickness of road is 50 millimeter this thickness we will define in shell section and then let's assume a car it's going from one end of this bridge to another end. The velocity of that car is 1000 millimeter per second. That means in two seconds, this car will go from this point to this point. Therefore, our simulation time will be two seconds. And that car is applying a uniform pressure of 10 megapascal in this much area. And this area, I'm showing it over here. This is 40 by 40 millimeter square and all the edges of this part are fixed. There is no way this is the real representation of a road on a suspended bridge, but this is just to understand subroutine deload. Therefore, just think of it as a plate and we are going to apply a pressure on that plate, which will move with respect to time. I'm using just elastic material properties for that plate. That means just Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio. We are going to use static general step. Therefore, we don't even need density. Now let's first model this problem in Abacus CAE and then we will go into deload subroutine and we will open deload subroutines dot for file and we will see what is inside that. Let's start with Abacus CAE. First set up your working directory and then create a part. I'm going to name it as road, although it is not a road. This part should be 3D deformable shell and in type you can select planar, say continue. Then I will create a rectangle. Make sure you keep one corner at 0, 0. If one corner is at 0, 0, it will be much easier for us to write a subroutine. Then I'm going to fix that one corner, which is at 0, 0. Say done. And then adjust the dimensions. So this width is 200. And this length is 2000. Okay. Then just say done. And this part is ready. Next, go to property, create a material. I'm going to name it as concrete and just mechanical elastic properties. So Young's modulus is 25 gigapascal, which we will convert into megapascal and Poisson's ratio is 0.25. Say okay. Then create a section. This should be shell section homogeneous. Say continue. And the thickness value we are going to define as 50 millimeters. Say OK. You don't have to change anything else. By default, the material will be concrete over here. Then assign that section to our part. Done. Next, go to assembly. Create one instance. Say OK. Next, go to step. Create static general step. Say continue. Here, change this time period to two seconds and go in increment and make it fixed increment of 0 0.02. This is not very complex geometry, so it should not have any convergence issues. And this I'm going to increase to 1000. Say OK. Next, go to load. And I'm going to fix all those four edges first. For that, select this create boundary condition, go into initial step. And select this first one, symmetry, anti-symmetry, and castry. Say continue. 
then select all these edges by holding shift command do not select the whole part just edges say done and select this in castroy say okay now all the edges are fixed and the pressure we are going to apply on this top surface and the area where we apply pressure is 40 by 40 millimeter square and that should move from one end to another end that we will take care by using subroutine here what you have to do is just select this create load go for step one select pressure say continue then just select this entire surface say done here because of shell part abacus will ask you which side do you want the top one or bottom one so we want top one which is represented in brown color if you see the bottom one will be purple color so i'm going to select brown from here now in magnitude just enter one and in distribution you have to select user defined when you select user defined over here abacus will show a note that user subroutine deload must be attached and that's what we are going to do here you don't have to define any magnitude we will define that magnitude in user subroutine say okay now although here it feels like there is a pressure applied on whole surface for all the time in subroutine we will adjust its location which will be based on time next go to mesh go in this part first in mesh controls structured say ok then seed the part this is two cores i am going to go with maybe 20 yeah 20 looks good say ok and then mesh it check the element type mesh element type select this region and here the element should be shell say ok and finally go to job create a job i am going to name it as deload job say continue over here you have to go into general tab and select user subroutine file so open this and save your deload subroutine file in your working directory itself and select that file say ok and again say ok and your job is created now let's open that deload.for file this is how that file looks like it is a very simple subroutine and what we are trying to do is also very simple thing over here it says the name of subroutine which is deload and from subroutine we are taking two parameters as input first is time and second is coordinate this time in bracket 2 that means it is a step time but in our case we have only one step therefore step time total time is same so you can have here two or one it will not matter in our case and there are three coordinates so coordinates one means x coordinate coordinate two means y coordinate and coordinate three is z coordinate so i'm saving these three coordinates separately in x y and z parameter now velocity of our car is 1000 millimeter per second so i define that velocity over here and if you pay attention to our plate the coordinate system is over here therefore velocity is along x direction means when car is moving its y coordinate and z coordinate they are not going to change only x coordinate is going to change therefore this x position parameter what it gives is x coordinate of car at any given time and that will be velocity into time therefore when time is zero when we are starting the simulation the x position will be zero because velocity into time is zero and at the end of simulation means after two seconds the x position will be velocity into time now which is two seconds so 1000 into 2 2000 millimeters then our y coordinates starts from zero and go up to 200 and we want a square which is in between over here and how this subroutine works is at every integration point in every time increment this subroutine will be called the input of subroutine will be time and coordinate of that integration point and it will check if there is a force at that particular location and at that particular time if there is a force it will assign that force value otherwise it will assign force value at zero now we have a if loop over here and this if loop says if the x coordinate of integration point is in between x positions plus 20 and x positions minus 20 and if the y coordinate of that point is in between 120 to 80 then only the value of force is 10 
again unit is megapascal here so 10 megapascal although this is f this is actually the value of pressure and otherwise means if that point is outside that square then the value is zero and that's it the output of this subroutine is this value f therefore we have a square over here at the center of this road which is moving from this point to this point and subroutine is just checking for every integration point and at every time increment if that point is inside that square or outside the square if inside the square then the pressure value is 10 if outside the square pressure value is 0 and now let's submit the job job is done let's see the results this is the road let me just adjust it like this so again coordinate system is over here and this is the deform shape oh looks like it's deformation scale is huge let's make it uniform to one apply and now you can see this is a stress at the end of simulation which is after two seconds so that's why you see a dot over here and if you go back in time you can see that dot is moving backwards you can animate this also in time using this button perfect you can see how car is moving you can see value of time over here so this will go from 0 to 2 seconds and in 2 seconds car is moving from here to here and that's it for this video if you have any questions please let me know in the comment section below if you like this video visit the channel's homepage where you can find many similar videos and don't forget to show your support by subscribing to this channel and as always thank you for watching